Well, since you like numbers so much, you have to remind everybody of the old saw about lies, damn lies, and statistics. Um, measuring open source contributions by saying, you know, 70% projects are GPL um, is basically a meaningless, meaningless statistic because if you look at the chaff on uh, Google Code and, and SourceForge, you're measuring the number of projects with that particular number, and the number of projects on those sites which are go nowhere and do nothing are, is staggering. Um, you know, so there's other more interesting metrics out there. I think OpenLogic, for example, actually did a did a look at what licenses are actually being used in enterprises as opposed to just the number of projects being used. And yes, GPL still leads, absolutely. Um, but yeah, in that metric, you see the uh, Apache license and the Eclipse public license um, in a much, much higher orders of magnitude greater usage, when you uh, greater numbers when you actually measure usage rather than um, uh, the number of projects. Um, and the other thing uh, in terms of uh, the points that you were making, um, talking about the GPL and saying that um, you know, that's where the vast, the, the most amount of money is being made, um, what you're basically doing there is conflating um, the commercialization of open source and money being made on open source with pure open source um, venture, venture backed startups. Um, there is an enormous amount of business, I would actually venture to say more business being done in and around and on open source that is not being done, um, that is being done by companies using open source, whether it be products or whether it be uh, within the enterprise, um, much more so than the pure play venture backed startup, um, which is I think what you're really referring to there. Um, referring to you know conflating commercialization of open source with um, with the, with startups is is I think uh, just not uh, you're just conflating two things which are quite different. I um, also want to point out that um, that the fundamental freedom of the GPL that you're referring to in the trust-based network and the uh, the idea that if you um, um, if you write something in the GPL, you can be confident that it will always remain under the GPL. Um, yes, that's true of the GPL, but it's also true of the EPL. Um, if you write your source code as a developer under the Eclipse public license, even if it ends up in WebSphere, that doesn't change the fact that that source code is and forever will be uh, made available to the entire community under the Eclipse public license. Um, that is one of the one of the, the, the fundamental uh, uh, fundamental um, provisions of the EPL. So there is the trust-based network. There are I mean, I did use examples of large companies uh, using the Eclipse public license in, in my opening comments, but there are an enormous number of startups using the EPL as well. Uh, Genuatech, Instantiations, um, uh, Eclipse Source, all of these companies. And by the way, even uh, Spring Source. Um, and Red Hat uh, ship uh, EPL license components as well. The, the, the EPL is, is pervasive through the industry, both in small startups as well as, um, as well as in the large companies. The difference about the EPL, and I think the strongest value, is that it gives you value um, on almost every single business model you can build with open source, you can do with the Eclipse public license. Whereas these other licenses force you into a much narrower, choice, much narrower selection of, uh, of business models. And having that flexibility in determining what business you're going to build, um, I think is one of the, uh, one of the fundamental uh, uh, benefits of the EPL. And then just uh, last thought, I mean, one of the things that I think um, the EPL gives um, is advantages to both the business people and the developers, which you've also talked about. But in the case of academics, and you were talking about the, the science, I mean, I think your characterization was actually quite wrong. It's not that um, the GPL uh, requires you to give credit to the people that you built uh, your work on. The GPL would also then in turn and say, oh, and by the way, the work that you did on top of the uh, preceding work, um, we get that too. That's actually what the GPL says. It's the EPL that says, yes, give credit to the work that was before you, um, and yes, you can do uh, what you want um, and claim credit for the work that you've actually done. Um, so I think those are some of the, the key benefits. I think also for government, uh, as a taxpayer and as a citizen, I think the EPL is the perfect model for work being done and funded through government sources, and I think that's why we see a lot of it happening um, in Europe, because basically what the EPL is saying in that context is um, the work that is being funded by the government will remain forever a public good and available in open source, um, but we are allowing commercial uh, exploitation and utilization on top of that, which as a taxpayer is exactly what I would want to see um, 
in government investments in, in open source. Um, that strikes the exact balance as far as I'm concerned.